Sometimes guitars need a little bit extra work beyond just a setup like today. We're going to be spending most of the time here. Uh, this is my fabrication shop. This is a milling machine that's going to be used today. So um, I believe that this is uh, the kind of guitar repair video that you haven't seen yet. So just keep watching. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you can't find replacement parts, you're gonna have to make your own. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what kind of quackery it takes to make a replacement part for a bridge. This bridge came off of a, an Epiphone, 1980s I believe, Epiphone S500. S, I believe, stands for Stratocaster. Um, so, speaking of quackery, welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where we do, you know what? In this video, we are going to fabricate a replacement part. So, this is a, a Floyd Rose inspired bridge. It's a little bit different because it's not a Floyd Rose. It's an Epiphone, but um, it works um, on the same principle. There are some fine tuners that I used to fine tune the strings. Therefore, they're called fine tuners. Um, in, in this case, the, the screws of the fine tuners push against these little, whatchamacallit, parts on this side. Now, the problem is that these levers Let's focus here. Are slipping past the fine tuners, as you can see. So on this side, it's not so bad. Here is how it works. But as we get closer to the treble side, it gets worse. So this fine tuner is not even contacting the lever, right? You see that? Yeah, you see it. Okay, and why is that? Because here we have a fracture. We also have a fracture on this side, but it's not so bad, I guess. So we would have to push this in this direction, and this is hard to do. And we, 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 need, we need to make one of those, this part, all right? So now, let's see what we can see under microscope. Mystery solved. As you can see, there are multiple hairline fractures everywhere and some some of the material chipped off now this material is called pot metal pot metal is the cheapest metal that can be used for casting it probably has a high lead content as well and um, it's very inconsistent pot metal is just a mixture of uh, scraps that they have and they they just throw it in a bin and then they melt them together and they mix it up so that's some quackery there for you let's zoom in a little bit and this is how often times pot metal ages There's the uh, second law of thermodynamics. Everything is going to break over time. So, there's only one thing that we can do. We are going to order a blank piece 
and make a replacement. Now, we're gonna order from one of my favorite companies, McMaster Car. And while we're uh, at it, we might as well upgrade. So I'm going to fabricate this piece out of uh, solid brass. Um, and, and this is the part number. So if, if you want to do this yourself, here I saved you some time. The part number on McMaster.com is 8954K341. Uh, that's their phone number, right? So, um, fortunately, in the 21st century, we don't need to go to the store. We can just uh, order it uh, because we have all this uh, electronic equipment available. So, why don't I do that? Hello, yes, I need to order a part for a guitar quackery. 8954K341. Thank you. Oh, subscribe. So, why don't we go to the workshop and start working on this? McMaster part number 8954K341 looks like this if you want to avoid paying the custom cutting fee. Now, I like to use a cutting technique pioneered by one of my favorite YouTubers. The Soul Tony. And there you have it. So now uh, we want to make a replacement out of brass. Uh, let's see how we did. Uh, all right. And you see, it's a little bit longer. That's exactly what we need. Friends. I like to give credit to all the good people on YouTube that inspire me. This old Tony. You should check out his uh, YouTube channel for metalworking tips. Now, let's go back to work. I've uh, disassembled um, everything that I had to disassemble. Um, well, this is going to be more complicated than, um, than I thought. Uh, first of all, these little, uh, I guess they are string holders they have a, a whatever two different diameters so these holes also um, there are th th there's uh, a bigger hole halfway through a smaller hole right uh, these have to be threaded for these screws so I have to figure out what thread standard this is and this needs to be threaded as well so i need to figure out what thread standard this is so um uh, there's a screw here that needs to be tapped as well and i guess i can remove these things okay so now i need to figure out how to transform this into this shape. This is a good opportunity to ask you to subscribe. Do me a favor, do it now before you forget. Now let's go back. So one good technique is to uh, mark off this part in blue so that we can scribe it like that. We take uh, a caliper, take this measurement, lock it, and just do this. Right? So, this here is what we need to remove. We can also mark off this part, this side, same way. A 
it's a little harder to see. And on this side. We can do it here too. I like doing this. Okay. Now we can go over to the milling machine and remove some material to make our first cut. Our workpiece is secured on this vise, milling vise. As you can see, the line we uh, I scribed is right above the surface here. This is resting on these two, they're called parallels. So now, let's just, let me try to This is not a metal working video, so I'm not going to get into details on how to use a milling machine. But basically, you cut off a little bit at a time, and what you see is greatly sped up so we don't have to watch through the whole process. So, this is just a guitar part. It's not super precision. And uh, we are good enough. So, there you go. We are one step closer. Now, uh, we need to uh, somehow cut off a piece from here and here. Best way to do this would be to, uh, to cut it with some kind of saw and then finish up on the mailing machine. So remember, this is a little bit wider than this, but um, I am going to use one of the edges. This one is fine. To measure this distance. And then use the same edge to measure this distance here. All right. And at the end, we're going to have to trim a little bit from this side at the very end. I'm going to remove the two sides just with a hacksaw and then finish it off on the milling machine in the next step. Okay. There we have it. I think we're done. Same procedure on the other side and we end up with a piece like this. As you recall, this is a little bit oversized. So let's make it right. That's the measurement. We just transfer it onto our workpiece. We can just use a hand file here. That's good enough for what it is. Let's be practical. And that's it. Now we got some more work to do. I decided to uh, drill these three threaded holes first because um, these three holes are the three mounting holes for the bridge plate. So we will be able to use them for indexing. Right? So we need to take some measurements first. 
Now, there's no easy, accurate way to take a measurement of uh, where the center of the first hole is from the edge, right? But uh, I think 13 millimeters is close enough. So we are going to write that down because we will need this later. 13.0. And now we just transfer 13 millimeters onto our workpiece. Okay. It's really not a good idea to try to take measurements off of a piece like this that's kind of uh, broken already. So I, uh, I took some basic measurements and did some simple calculations. And uh, why don't I show you? Here we have our workpiece. And uh, this is a, a, you know, sketched out. Uh, so we have our measurement, 13 millimeters right here from, from the edge to this line. Uh, from center to center, it's 42.44, uh, which means 21.22 here. Those are my calculations. And then you have uh, six strings. So you can uh, calculate what the spacing is and you know this way you have all the accurate measurements without actually trying to measure everything so now let's go back to the shop and do some drilling and milling those were just the pilot holes using a very stiff center drill um, i'll explain this later uh, once we have the pilot holes uh, where we want them to be, we use regular drill bits to drill deeper. As you can see here, um, I'm just going to show you one of the three holes. The others uh, are going to be the same procedure. And uh, once we have um, the actual holes drilled out, we use um, a tap um, to tap the threads for the screws. Now, I know this sounds like my neighbor's mattress upstairs, but it's actually something else. Those are the three threaded holes that are used uh, for the mounting screws um, that, you know, are used to fasten uh, the trim block to the bottom of the bridge plate. Uh, so once I cut these threads, it's always a good idea to check um, just you know, by using uh, one of the screws and check all three holes. And once it passes quality control, then we're ready for our next step. Let's have a look at our, uh, the piece we're replicating. So it has a, a slot for this uh, thingamaling, right? So I already took all the measurements. Uh, by now you already get the idea how this is done. Uh, everything is lined up, so let's just do some cutting. The milling machine is uh, set up for a certain depth. Uh, but we're going to check. Uh, so it's hard to measure this because uh, here the milling machine is actually in the way. So I'm going to use a trick uh, here. Uh, with these, I can measure um, this depth and I can see that um, I barely have any, any gaps between the teeth showing. So now I compare it to this one and I can see that it's the same. It's time to drill some more holes. So let's talk about this for a moment. This is um, a drill bit. Okay, we all know what it looks like. Now, when you drill through metal, you, you can't just take a drill bit and drill through. Uh, you'll actually have to start with this tool. This is a center drill. A center drill is essentially a very short and stiff 
drill bit uh, that will ensure that you hit the actual center of the hole that you need to drill into the metal. Yeah. So once you drill uh, your pilot hole, your shallow pilot hole using the center drill, you start with a smaller diameter drill bit first and you drill to your desired depth or through the entire piece. Uh, and then you work your way up to the final size. Uh, however, if you want to produce a really smooth internal finish, you need to use a reamer. Uh, uh, that's a slightly more expensive tool. And because I don't have an actual metal fabrication shop, I don't have all the tools. So uh, the customer didn't have um, a budget to buy extra tools. So uh, we decided to make a test piece first, right? And uh, I just used a scrap piece of metal and I only used drill bits without a reamer. Now, as you can see, there's a, a step inside. So there are two internal diameters and um, that step is for the string bushing, which also has a step and uh, so that it doesn't fall through. All right. So we decided not to use a, sorry, a guitar quackery. Oh, customer wants to know why I drilled um, on the side of the test piece, not in the middle. Yeah, uh, that's because uh, if I need to drill another test hole, um, I have enough material left on the side, on the other side. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Okay, <laughs> good. Oh, subscribe. Yeah. So let's go downstairs and let's drill the six holes for the string bushings. Almost done. So, yeah. Now we need the whammy bar uh, socket and then uh, some holes for the springs. I know this might appear to be a lot of work, but it really didn't take that long to get to this point. Uh, yeah, you know, plus it's easy work, which is why you really shouldn't even consider clicking the like, share and subscribe buttons below. And all this editing also, it's easy work. I'm, I can practically do it in my sleep. Uh, I mean, if I was sleeping at this time, it's not even 4.45 a.m. yet. Um, yeah, which is why you shouldn't even consider clicking that link below that says buy me a coffee, as in to keep me up at night editing these videos for you. I, you know, don't bother. Uh, all right, enough said. Let's go back to the workshop and continue.
here's what we have so far, and here's what we have to make. Next, I'm going to make the socket for the whammy bar. The original socket uses this bushing, okay? So it has an internal thread. However, it's not the best design and the customer lost the whammy bar, doesn't have it. So instead, we're going to use a Floyd Rose whammy bar. Now this one has a different mounting system. So what we need to focus on is this part here. We don't need this, but we need to make a hole this size right here, all right? So then instead of this, there will be a hole. This will go inside the hole and a screw will be holding this down. So this fits inside and we can fasten it. Simple. Uh, we can use a standard Floyd Rose whammy bar, okay? But uh, we're not done yet. Um, so um, this piece is still taller than this piece and we need to trim it a little bit. Let's go do that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that was not the sound of the milling machine. I just thought I'd do some tidying up while uh, the computer is rendering the videos. But speaking of milling, we do have some more milling to do. We've come a long way, but there's still some work to be done. I've already marked off um, this workpiece for drilling five holes on this side and on this side for the springs, okay? Now, these holes need to be drilled at an angle since a drill press or a milling machine only drills straight up and down, we we have to tilt the workpiece. There's a few ways to mount the workpiece at an angle. I do have a tilting vise, but it's a lot of work to uh, to change the vise on the mailing machine. So I just decided to uh, to put two steel rods to throw the workpiece at an angle. So uh, tram springs have uh, little hooks like this and uh, they are angled, uh, which is why I am going to drill uh, the you know small holes for the hooks at an angle. So watch me do it. And that's it. Now this piece is finished. Real exciting part is assembly, obviously. So these bushings, whatever they called, they go here. Okay, this 
one seems to be stuck. Look at this. We're done with the fabrication. It's half assembled. So why don't we have a closer look? I still have to install the six string bushings as well as the six fine tuning levers and of course the saddles. Uh, at this point, I just wanted to make sure that um, it fits on the plate or I should say underneath the bridge plate and also that uh, the Floyd Rose uh, trim arm bushing fits as it should. Now I could have spent more time uh, polishing and buffing to make it look really, really nice, but there's an old Chinese proverb that says, um, if the customer is not paying for the job, don't do the job. Um, as much as I like this customer, um, he only had a budget for this much work. Uh, and it turns out that um, I actually had to spend five or six times more time um, on the fabrication part. So um, this brings me to the next Chinese proverb that says, uh, move on to the next job. So before I move on to the next job, I need to finish this job. The guitar will get a full level crown and polish and some other minor work. And of course, we need to assemble the bridge um, and do a full setup on the guitar. So why don't we go to the shop and why don't we do that? I am assembling the entire bridge mechanism. These are the bushings for the strings. They go inside here. Yeah. six of them. Here we have the fine tuners. They go right here. The crossbar lays flat inside of this. Three screws hold down the bridge plate. I'm going to mount only one of them right now in the interest of time. Okay. Now the Floyd rose uh, bushing goes here. It also holds down, uh, assists holding down the bridge plate. Okay, now let's look at it. Uh, I have to add uh, these screws obviously on the side, but I will do this later. And then uh, six saddles uh, go here and we're done. So. The guitar needs a full level crown and polish and then a full setup and some other minor work. So let's get to work. The guitar had a bunch of work done to it, but I need to keep this video focused on the fabrication of that piece, right? Uh, but I'll still show you, uh, I did a level crown and polish. I already did a first pass on uh, the level crown and polish. You can see here, if you come closer, how uh, the frets were in fact very uneven. So here we had some high frets, then we have a, a low spot on the fretboard and then a high again. So we really cannot have a fretboard going up and down and up and then down again. So um, the level crown and polish will obviously improve the guitar. And I will show you when it's all polished up, yeah? It turns out we have to uh, do some tweaking on this, so we're not done with the fabrication. Um, here's the problem. These corners, I marked them off in red. On the original trim block, they were rounded off. So this is rounded off, it's really tight. So I need to raise these two screws far up in order to somehow be able to put this in place. And then even, uh, even now, uh, so I would have to now lower both of these screws. Um, that corner kind of hits, um, hits, you know, the inside corner of the guitar and it limits the travel a little bit. So um, I, I feel that we can improve by rounding off these corners. So unfortunately we won't be able to finish this guitar today. I need to dismantle everything and put this block back on the mending machine. Let's go back. The 
this is definitely an upgrade from the original factory piece. Uh, looks pretty nice. Of course, nobody will see it except Tex working on this guitar. Um, so these are the string bushings. They will be pushed in this direction by the strings and the fine tuners will be used to, well, to fine tune. Um, so it's the uh, low E string, for example. So now we definitely have full contact of the fine tuning screw pushing the lever. Yeah, we have full range. Yeah, I am definitely happy with the way this came out. We have to install it. Oh yeah, and that's the Floyd Rose uh, trim bar bushing that's also an upgrade since you're still watching obviously make sure you click uh, the like share and subscribe buttons and now finally we get to install this damn thing inside of the guitar so now that the corners have been rounded off let's see how it fits inside oh easy look at that and we have a much better range as well. I'm real happy with this. Guitar business is serious business. So there's just this uh, small formality we need to take care of. This is the official badge uh, from the New York City Department of Guitar Maintenance and Repairs. Make sure you check out uh, the other YouTube channel, Department of Guitars. The link is below. Okay, don't forget. So now let's just go back to the shop and wrap it up. Viewers of Guitar Quackery know that Guitar Quackery customers also get the gold seal of approval issued by the New York City Department of Guitar Maintenance and Repairs. The official gold seal of approval can be placed inside of the cavity right here. This means the guitar has been inspected and is safe to play in public. This guitar will get a trim setter, so we only put two springs. The trim setter goes here, and I will do a full setup separately. That means it's not included in this video, right? Uh, but it's almost like a Floyd Rose guitar setup, uh, except it's not a Floyd Rose, so it's not exactly like it. And that's why I said almost. Right. Put the strings on, set up, and play. Oh, you're still here. It's selfie time. It's that time of night. Everybody left. So, I never play Floyd Rose equipped guitars, so I don't know how to play this type of guitar, but um, I'll try to demo it to the best of my abilities. Great, right? Uh, I'm too old for this. Uh, well, wait till you get to my age. Don't laugh at old people. So, um, this guitar is really difficult to set up because it's not a Floyd Rose. It's more difficult to set up this system than a Floyd Rose system. I guess that's because some aspects of the system are not as well perfected as on a Floyd Rose system, because it's not a Floyd Rose, as I just said. The system does not perform as well as a Floyd Rose system, because it's not a Floyd Rose. And the trim setter, which we've installed inside, does not perform as well with this system as it does with 
I think you guessed it, a Floyd Rose. Because this is not a Floyd Rose, just like I said. I'm even wondering if I should remove the trim setter and put the old spring back. But maybe the customer will decide that. So um, I'm really happy with uh, the brass, uh, whatever I machine, whatever it's called. And I think it's time to call it the day. So uh, I'll go back to the studio and, you know, I gotta go now. Yeah, man, it only took about half a century to bring this project to an end, including the editing of this video. In the future, I'm going to make two versions of these videos. Uh, one, the short version will be accessible to the general public through YouTube. And then the full version will be uploaded on my Patreon page uh, as exclusive content. So if you feel that uh, you like to watch full versions of this kind of work, uh, just start checking out my uh, Patreon page. Uh, the link is downstairs. Uh, it's under development as we speak. Now, um, there are some other links below. Uh, there's one link to uh, buy me a coffee. Thank you. Because I stay up late at night, I need some coffee. Uh, you can buy Guitar Quackery merch. Don't forget to click like, share and subscribe. Okay. And that's it, my friends. I'll see you soon.